I'd like to start with the sort of question that I would like to ask every revolutionary who crosses this stage. Did you imagine, Alice, back in 1971 when you opened Chez Panisse, that it would have the effect on the world that it did? Never imagined. Never imagined. I just thought it was going to be a little Berkeley restaurant and uh, French, definitely French. But uh, I, I, I that, that's how I saw it, really. So now, today, as you gaze across the restaurant landscape of the United States, do you ever think, my God, what have I done? <laughs> Well, it, these are ideas that, that I really um, took from my time in France when I was 19. And, you know, they were uh, values of that particular slow food culture. But they're very universal values, growing things or, organically, sustainably, uh, eating with your family and friends, eating seasonally, celebrating the harvest, liking children and older people. <laughs> I mean, these are our universal values. And, and I was just lucky that I absorbed all of that when I was a student and very impressionable. And, and I just, I wanted to live like the French. I wanted a baguette to taste just like the one coming out of the oven in a little French bakery. And I wanted the butter like that. And I wanted to find fraise de pois. And I wanted to have a beautiful salad that would come after the meal. And I wanted fruit on the table. And I wanted, you know, all of that. And, and to really encourage a kind of conversation at the table. So we had many dinners that were big, long tables. And everybody would be invited to sit together. But I was part of the counterculture. I absolutely believed that if I was doing something that was really tasty and good, that people would come. It never occurred to me. And I wasn't thinking about making money. Never. I, of course, we didn't make any money for about eight years. <laughs> <laughs> and my friends had to take care of me. But uh, we ultimately did. Uh, but that was never the first concern, in fact was really the last. I'm curious, Alice, if you could tell us about France in the late 1960s. It was before fast food mm -hmm. came to France. I mean, it really was a time when there were markets on every street corner. And you had to go a second time in the day so that you could get the salad for dinner. And I talk about this restaurant that I went to out in Brittany little tiny place, and uh, uh, the French were exclaiming over the, the melon and, uh, you know, the trout. And I, I thought, my goodness, and I tasted it differently. And I found out later um, that the trout came from the stream right down below, and the melon came from their garden, and the raspberries for the tart were just in the bramble across the way. And so I just absorbed that, those ideas about aliveness and of the moment. How did you translate that to Berkeley in 1971? <laughs> well, I, I started going to, uh, you know, ethnic markets, looking for a, a kind of butcher shop where ducks would be hanging and fish would be alive in a tank. I thought, well, maybe this is where I could find that food. And then I ended up getting seeds um, from France, the mescaline salad seeds. And I planted a garden in the whole backyard of my house. Now, we are here, of course, to champion your new book, My Pantry, which you wrote with Fanny Singer, your daughter. Here she's, <laughs> it's a handsome volume. It's a guide to building not just a well-stocked pantry, but a delicious one filled with all sorts of homemade pickles and vinegars and oils and cheeses and the like. Um, Fanny, what was it like working with your mom? I live in England, so I, um, this was really the perfect excuse to spend more time together. I mean, I've lived in England now for nearly 
nearly 10 years. And, um, and any excuse to get back to Berkeley or to get my mom over to spend time really is a, is a worthy one. And this was, you know, it's the first time since I was eight when I nominally collaborated on the um, writing of Fanny at Chez Panisse um, that we've really done something like this together. So people are sort of expecting that it would, would have had more friction, but really it was a pretty, a pretty harmonious collaboration. There's a really delightful quality to your illustrations, Fanny. Did you work together? Did you sketch while in the house and Mostly together? in our kitchen, yeah. And then when I was back in England, my mom would send me iPhone snaps and things around the kitchen. And so actually it's a very um, authentic representation actually of what the things in our kitchen look like. So um, in that way, quite an intimate portrait. So they're quite idiosyncratic, I think. Yeah, it was really fun to do. Alison, you, you've said in the past that eating is a ritual and the business of putting food on tables for other people is not simply a business. It's not simply a pleasure. It's more than that. You've said it's about changing lives. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Food really did change my life and, and for the better. And I've seen how the experience of, you know, working in the garden and cooking your own food and eating it together with friends can really be transformational. I mean, it can bring you back to your senses and back to a kind of beauty of nature and, and just have an everyday ritual that kind of revives you. It's deeply a belief that I have that I am trying to feed people ideas, if you will. And so I want them to fall in love with whatever it is and say, where did that come from? I want, I, I, I want to get it again. I mean, it's just, that's the response that I'm looking for. Quite recently, the president himself honored you with uh, an award at the White House. And in your remarks at the White House, had a great line about how when we serve children good food and teach them where it comes from, we're nourishing more than their bodies and minds, but democracy itself. Can you talk about that? That came from France, too. I'm with Briot Savarin. He said, the destiny of nations depends on how they nourish themselves. And I've really taken that to heart. I really understand what he's saying now. And that we are what we eat. That when we eat fast food, we're digesting more than the food itself that may be unhealthy. We're digesting the values that come with the food. So we're, we're, we're understanding that, that everything should be the same no matter where you live, that there are no seasons, that cooking is drudgery, that food should be fast, cheap, and easy, that we can eat in our car, and that's okay. <laughs> Truly. And I think when you are aware of what you're eating, and you're eating with determination, you are connecting with a community outside of yourself, you're connecting with farms. You're connecting with people that sell you the bread, the baguette down at the store, and the person who's you're, you're becoming dependent upon each other. And that's what democracy is about. And it's learning to have a conversation at a table with people that are really different from you. I think learning to pass the peas is teaching you generosity. And you're, you're thinking about everybody who's at the table. Is there enough? Are there enough here? I'll take a smaller amount so that it goes around the table. I mean, these are the values. These are the, the roots of, of a democratic country. Fanny, what's your very first memory of Chez Panisse? I think it was probably sitting on the counter in the pastry department, getting frozen raspberries put on my fingertips by the pastry chef, Mary Jo. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think that I remember being put to sleep in a big salad bowl when I was, un, you know, like <laughs> two months old. But I don't think yeah, I don't think I, that's really a true memory. Um, Alice, where and when are you happiest? Ooh. <laughs> Hanging out with my daughter. Oh, little round of applause for that one. <laughs>